How's that? Hey, what are you looking at? No, 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 no. This is not what you think. I have the family's permission. Meet Grandpa Fragili. Anyway, what's this all about? I have something to share with you that is sheerly brilliant. Sheerly brilliant. In fact, uh, it is slicker than Colonel Sanders' butter spread off an alligator's tooth. Hey, say hi to my friends in Alligator, Mississippi, cultural capital of the world. Anyway, welcome to the upteenth episode in the series about the Galliano junk pile. Not pretty. Totally not pretty. Worst guitar I have ever worked on. When I got it and rattled it, it made more noise than that, whatever that is, driving by this wondrous place we call a rural community that is Acton, California, the cultural capital world. Sorry, Alligator, Mississippi. But here's the story. You know that this is the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. And it was the only thing about this guitar that was redeeming. So we started a painful episode in which we were going to refret the neck and the thing literally corroded. Tutankhamun's tomb was going, oh no, this is not going to end well. So when you work on 4,000 or 80-year-old guitars, whatever, sometimes things go bad. So we pulled the fretboard off of this, and it actually came off good. And then we took a piece of straight edge with 400 grit self-adhesive sandpaper and leveled this out like so and then took a straight edge and ran it over it and everything was fine and so then it come time we are going to take the two-sided tape off that I used to use the old fingerboard to cut the new one and everything turned out perfect so I thought you know what we're going to glue this on here, and of course we're going to use this shim here underneath here to pitch the neck back like you saw in the Bonneville Junk Pile episode playlist up there. Don't blame me for your weekend being gone, but you will be sheerly brilliant after you watch that one. Anyway, so we've got this all ready. It's time to fret this. So we glue the fingerboard on, and then we wait and let that dry, and then we glue this on the guitar, or we don't glue this on the guitar and leave this sit here and put it in cradles and watch it flop all over and bead on it and further duress the 80-some-year-old neck. You know what? No, we're not going to do that. I'm going to show you something really slick. And we're going to hit the bench. That donkey over there, I swear, everybody is hating on me because of my sheer brilliance. Let's go to the bench. Okay, let's dive right into it. Uh, you'll remember from the last episode, we had to remove the fretboard, the original fretboard. And the reason we did that is because this one was starting to deteriorate. I ended up using it as a template for the new fretboard um, that we got in by mail, and it turned out great. And so now comes the time to glue this on here. And I'm thinking, you know what? I have to put frets on here. And you know that anytime you have a fret press, and as long as everything is, is good and you can get um, a stand up here and get everything in the fret press good everything's good but you get down in here and you're trying to run a fret press on this not good and add on to the fact that we are going to be gluing this back on to the body which is yeah no we don't want to stress that out anymore than we need to so let me show you a little trick here. We have another piece of wood. 
and I have put two-sided tape on here and I thought I had it ready to be pulled back. Oh, I did. Look at that. I thought I was losing my mind. Can't lose something that's been lost already, right? Where is it? There it is. So, look at that. Now, what am I doing? I'm leaving the two-sided tape on this and leaving these together. And I'm going to set this up right here like so. And I'm going to press down on that two-sided tape like so. And then I'm going to take and put this beautiful, isn't that beautiful? You know it is. This would have been my prom date. Trust me, if I had to do it all over again. At least I would have went. Anyway, look at what we've got here. Now I have a solid level surface that I can fret the whole fretboard with and not have to worry about damaging anything. So let me get this set up. It'll be a quick episode. We're going to run through uh, the technique that I've used to fret uh, this using an arbor press and all that. And... Um, yeah, if you've watched my channel for any period of time, you've seen this before. But for those of you that have not, once you are able to do this grasshopper, it will be time for you to leave. All right, guys, we are ready to get to fretting. And we are going to learn about using a fret wire bender. You see this? The reason you use these is because even though this fretboard has no radius, some fretboards have a radius, they're curved, which makes it much easier to fret. Um, this fretboard was ordered uh, and it will fit a Dobro or anything else with a flat neck profile. Most of them aren't like this. But here's the deal. I cannot have this looking like this when it needs to be dark like the old one. It would just take away from the overall semi-beautiful condition that was this. So, we're going to use a product that we are intimately familiar with through an episode we did about Bob the Junk Pile Archtop right about there, right about now. See, I'm getting better at pointing out the, the eye cards. And that is Oak Gall Ink, made from... Galls that grow from the Andricus wasp on Quercus agrifolia. I've stumbled along with some scientific terms long enough to show you a link to the episode on how to make this stuff yourself. Now, why don't I fret, why don't I fret the guitar and put this on her? This stuff is highly corrosive to metal when it's wet, and it will also... Um, the application of coats is blemished if there are any fingerprints or oils or anything here. This stuff was used to sign documents like the Constitution of the United States. So, first thing we want to do is make sure that there are no fingerprints or oils. We'll take some 600 grit sandpaper and go over this. You notice I have gloves on, so I don't put any any uh, oils on the fretboard and we are going to coat this with oat gall ink it gets darker as it dries again the stuff is a mess once it spills on something and it gets darker as it goes now, you don't want to put multiple coats on until the first coat is dry. And I am not going to put it on the bottom because that's where our glue will be. But again, several light coats with some sanding in between once everything is dry is far more desirable than trying to heap on multiple coats. Notice that this wood is drinking this stuff in very quickly. Catch you in a minute. Mm. 
All right, there we go. First coat dried up. Make sure there's none of the iron sulfate particles in there to cause things to bunch up and give us a color that's not uniform. And of course, once we're done, we can go along the edges with sandpaper and rough this up and make it look aged like the original one that spent 80 years of service on here. All right. I think by the time this gets darker as it dries, you will see that it's exactly what we want and now we'll get on the process of fretting. All right, there we go. I'm happy with this. If you look here, it's very difficult for you to tell the difference in the color of the original fretboard, which is on the bottom, and the new one on top. There's a gap right there that shows you the color uh, of some tape that's left on the bottom one, but I'm really happy with the way this turned out. So, again, we can take a piece of the right grit sandpaper and go along the edges and put some wear pattern there, like so. But working the frets as we refret this thing will be um, enough to help us get there. I want to introduce a tool to you that I'm not sure everybody understands. It's just starting off, um, and this is a fret wire bender. So what you do is you put in a piece of fret wire and you adjust this wheel up and down with this thumb screw. And when you do that, it moves this wheel closer or further away. The closer it gets, when you wind, when you put the wire in here, you put the slot or the tang of the fret wire in that groove and then you simply rotate this it helps to do it the right way, okay? And what ends up happening is it puts a radius on the fret wire and gives it a slight bend. Do you see that? Now, the further that I put that down, the more radical the fret wire is bent. And here's the purpose. If I put straight fret wire in on the fretboard, when I pop it down here, what, it, what will end up happening is this side will go in, then this side uh, will go in, we'll cut it off with the fret nippers, and then the center will pop up and we'll bash back and forth, and this will pop up, this will pop up. When you're using a fret wire bender, it'll put this slight radius, the radius you desire, like so. People used to do this with the pliers, but it gives us a slight radius. So when it comes to using this practically, you don't want to sit here and hold it and have the wire fall out like it just did. You can put it uh, on the side of your, your bench over here. Uh, you could put it on a block of wood. Uh, you could put it in the vise on your workstation, or you could have a vise that's portable like this, and then you simply mount it here where it's stable like this, and then you just run your wire through it and get enough of two, three, or four strands of fret wire, uh, whatever it takes to do a complete fretboard, and... You run it through the fret wire bender like so. Got to make sure you get it in the groove. That's for sure. But it's real simple and it gets, a, like I said, if it's not where you want it to be, you can send it down a little bit, cinch it up, and then put any kind of radius 
you want to now some guitars have a radius that's set on the fretboard but here's the idea it gives it a slight bend okay so now with it a bent with a slight radius I can take and um, nip off the end at a 45 like I always do I've talked to you about that a little bit and that kind of gets the tang part out of the way right away and because there's a little bend I can come in down here and find that slot and push it in like so hold it there and tap it down and then simply go along like this and pop this off and then drive the rest of it down and you'll notice that because it's radius just a tad once I get the two sides in they'll hold themselves down pretty well and then the middle drives itself and what it does in theory is because there's a slight radius when I get this down and this down and then drive the center down it actually shifts the tangs over just a tad from where you drove them in in the first place and help secure them. Now the next thing I can do rather than beat these all in with uh, a hammer, I can bring in my fret press and I did an episode on how to make one of these. Where's my pointer? I'll give you a card to it right up there right about now. But you basically buy this coal and the appropriate radius uh, die here that rides the fret and then you basically use this gadget and this is where not having it attached to the neck works out great because I have it on a piece of board and I simply line that up and I give it a great deal of pressure with my massive weight and there you go so I simply drive the frets in and walk down the board here and press all of these in. At that point, it will be time to glue, separate these and glue this onto the neck, grasshopper. All right, guys, there we go. That is what it looks like. We are gonna separate this off the double-sided tape and get everything back on the neck there he is the the area work area is pretty small here I'm gonna use the original not get that back where it goes but moral of the story here a couple things you want to think about if you're going to do a lot of fretting um, the arbor press this gadget, the fret nippers, the fret slot cleaner, the fret saw. Yeah, you're going to be 300 bucks into this before you know it. And then comes the, uh, the files and the dressing and the, the, the fingerboard protector and everything. So it's pretty easy to get into this pretty heavy. Uh, don't make these impulse per purchases uh, until you know you're going to be building a lot of fret boards which involves even building necks and scarf joints and all that kind of thing so um, I'm happy with the way this turned out it's certainly better than what we started with alrighty that wasn't too bad again if you have the right tools always remember there are some jobbers that will sell you fretted necks and that kind of thing so if you're getting into this and uh, uh, fretted fingerboards and all that so if you're getting into this you don't have to get in over your head um, again the, the 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 equipment is fairly expensive if you're gonna make the investment to do a bunch of this um, don't get <laughs> manic and and buy everything because that's what I did and then you're building guitars because you feel you have to make up for the investment <laughs> at some point that never works in the logic uh, of it all so we are going to put up the high glue heater and we're going to put this back on the neck and um, or the guitar 
and there's going to be a bunch of filing and fret dressing and, and who knows what. And I've given you, if I've got a card left, I'll give you an episode to some of that right up there right about now. Uh, but this certainly is far better than what we started with. We will be building the shim that we need again to calculate what angle the fretboard needs to be on in order to line up with the floating bridge we're going to use. So that involves again making one of these that fits in here and gives us the right pitch which will pop this up in the pocket just a little bit. But then it'll be time to get all this put back together. We'll put the back on it and we will end up with something that is somewhat functional. And if it's not, we can turn it around and put a couple slats in here and make a cool shelf, right? No, not. So, one more time to the plethora of the populace in the Metropolitan Center that is Alligator, Mississippi. Shout out to you all. Thanks for watching. Give me a like and then look forward to the next episode in which we glue everything back together and get closer and closer to this thing being a dive bar special. See you soon.